So this question here, we have a graph, and right off the bat, we might as well do an oizerga. So O, Y, X, I, R, G, A. There's the origin. The y-axis is force. It goes by tens, normal units of newtons. The x-axis is spring length. Spring length, not elongation. And of course, the difference there, as I have a spring at equilibrium, and it, say, is 20 centimeters long, and we stretch it, is now 28.0 centimeters long, but the elongation is 8 centimeters. So this is the spring length. We need to subtract the um, initial spring length when there's no force applied to it. All right, and so we have intercepts here. There's, there's no y-intercept, none, and... And the x-intercept is the force equals 0 at 0 0.3 meters. We can read force and distance. It's F over x, which is the spring constant k. And the area is going to be related to the work. Force times distance is going to be the work. It's going to be related to that. All right, so we've made sense of this now. We look at the, the function here. We might say that's a straight line, given some minor uncertainties. So the force spring is a function of the length of the spring. A block on a frictionless table is pushed against the spring that is fastened to the wall. So this looks like our horizontal situation. So we have a spring, like so, that is fastened to a wall. So we put a block on it, and we move it from here to here and the spring compresses. The spring is compressed until its length is 20 centimeters. Well, that's 0 0.2 meters. And that's what we can see is this location here. The block is then released. Which of the following values is closest to the kinetic energy which the block that leaves the spring? <clears throat> well, we know the slope of this graph should be the spring constant. So let's start there. Um, and that's going to be 60 minus 0 all over 0 0.1. So that is going to be 600 newtons per meter. 60 divided by... One-tenth is 600 newtons per meter. And so the potential energy of the spring is one-half kx squared. And of course, so that's the energy, and that will be equal to the kinetic energy at the end. The elastic potential energy will become the kinetic energy. So we have one-half times 600 times x squared. Well, we changed its length. We changed its length by 0 0.2. So we have 300 times 0 0.04, which we can then see the 4 and the 3 is going to give us a 12, 12 joules.